Hi, my name is Cara Devine and you are now Behind the Bar. So today I'm going to show you how to make what I think is the perfect margarita. It's obviously a really simple drink. The margarita cocktail is only three ingredients, kind of four if you count the salt. You just have to make sure that the products are really good. So let's get started. As I said, margarita is a nice and simple cocktail. So it does mean that the products that you use do matter. Obviously, the star of our show here is the tequila. I could talk about tequila for days, um, but I think we'll save that for another episode. What I will say is don't buy cheap tequila. You're just f***ing over the farmers in Mexico and that's not very nice. Make sure A, that it's 100% agave and B, if you can, do a little bit of research and, and make sure that it's one that's ethically farmed. The one that I'm using is Calle 23. I like this because it's run by a young French biochemist called Sophie who sort of did what we would all love to do and decided to run off to Mexico and start making tequila. And she brings her scientific knowledge to bear on this really awesome ancient spirit. Tequila is, is really all about the terroir, similar to wine. So what you're looking for in really good tequila is you know, a really awesome expression of where the agave was actually grown. We are using a Blanco tequila and that's usually what margaritas are made with. There are three different classifications of tequila. So you've got Blanco, Reposado and Añejo. And it's basically all about how long they've spent in oak resting. And as you can see, it's white. So that's seen as really the purest expression of that thing that I'm saying again, terroir. Obviously everyone has their favorites, but definitely in a margarita where you want it to be really punchy and fresh um, and herbaceous, a Blanco is, is probably the, the one to go for there. And this is my choice. Now your other ingredient is the orange liqueur. So you might have heard the terms curacao or triple sec. They're basically both the same thing. There's not a legal difference between them. There is a little bit of a historical difference. Curacao obviously originated on the island of Curacao, but it doesn't have to be made there anymore. It's really more of a stylistic thing now. The ones that you might have heard of would be Gran Marnier or Cointreau. Just for something a bit different, and because I really love this brand, I've gone for Marionette Curacao. It's made here in Melbourne by some ex-bartenders who kind of saw a gap in the market for some really good quality liqueurs. It's often and, you know the thing that's overlooked when it comes to cocktail making and so their whole thing is wanting to work directly with farmers uh, so all Aussie farmers all nice and local to make sure that they're getting amazing fruit and that the farmers are getting a good deal so in here you've got three different types of oranges so it gives it a really lovely fresh and vibrant flavor they also blend it with some neutral grain spirit but also some brandy to give it a depth of flavor and a bit of complexity and it's also aged in barrels for a while as well so it's a really delicious product um, and one of my favorites. So to get started, you'll need something to shake the margarita in. Most bars really now use tin on tin. That being said, I've definitely been at parties where they've been shaken in Tupperware and things, so don't stress too much about it. You'll need your jigger, some kind of measure, a couple of strainers, and then I've also got this citrus press here to squeeze the lime juice fresh. So we're gonna take 50 mils of our good quality tequila. Bartenders do tend to work to ratios as, a part, as opposed to you know, actual kind of millage. You can do 60 mils of this if you want something a little bit boozier, but the general ratio is two parts of your base spirit to one part of the sour to half a part of the sweet is usually about right. And then obviously have a little taste and adjust it according to, to how sweet your palate is, how sour the lime juice is on that particular day, anything on any of those variables technically 12 and a half mils, but I'm gonna be a little bit generous with this and do 15 of the marionette curacao. Ideally, you probably want to squeeze your lime juice fresh, especially for this drink, you want it to be really kind of zingy. So you're obviously looking for 25 mils. So just measure out in a glass first so that you can do it properly in your jigger. So before you shake, you do want to get your glass ready. Obviously, once you've shaked the cocktail, it's just going to be sitting on the ice and diluting a little bit. You want to minimize that amount of time. You don't want to be faffing around, looking for your glass, smashing your glass by accident. Preferably refrigerate the glass. Uh, even better if you can put it in the freezer. It's a bit of a waste if you spend all of this time shaking the cocktail until it's so cold that it's hurting your hands and then you pour it into a room temperature glass especially here in Australia where it can, room temperature can be 40 degrees. 
So nice cold glass is gonna keep your drink colder for longer. Get a little lime wedge, and I like to just go around with half of the glass uh, to do the salt rim, so that people can choose how much salt they want to take in with each sip. And you just dab it around the outside, so the salt sticks to the lime juice there. Give it a little shake to the side because you don't want any salt kind of actually in the drink. When you are building in a shaker, I always build in the smaller uh, one and then you can just fill that entirely with ice. The more ice, the better. And then that will just fit really nicely inside your big tin. At this point, a lot of people like to do big slaps and things like that. Um, you're actually more at the mercy of physics just now because as soon as this gets kind of cold, then the tins are going to contract and stick to each other. You just want to make sure that they're kind of nicely lined up um, on this side here. Turn to the side just in case you do manage to let it fly out of your hands. I have seen it happen a few times. You'd rather get it all over yourself than all over a customer and shake as hard as you can. Obviously at this point you can see it getting nice and cold. It gets a little bit difficult to touch. And so that's it ready. Just pop it off. Double strain here. You don't have to double strain. If you prefer the little chips, you're more than welcome to leave them in there and it totally works as well. And there you are, what I think is a perfect margarita. So now you know. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. Mm -hmm.